And uh, this one, this one right here. No, Sam, don't tell them about it. What is going on, Link Pro Tackle fam, guys? This video here, we're gonna be talking about my top picks for September. Now, regionally, I'm gonna be talking about some baits here that work more in Texas, some of your Southern states that are hitting that early fall transition uh, as that bait starts moving, as those fish start moving as well. Water temps are gonna be going down just a hair fish are moving. So a lot of these baits, again, gonna be very regional to the south here. If you're up north, make sure to watch this video again, you know, come back in. And uh, if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe, y'all. The Garmin video that I did for the live scope and all that, uh, I think only seven to eight percent of y'all were subscribed. So if you're tuning back in, thank you so much for joining. This here, Lake Pro Tackle, we're located in Gainesville, Texas. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook at Lake Pro Tackle. We're letting you know when we get the hottest items in and uh, we try to get them in as soon as we can so that way you get first crack at them. So, you know, here in Texas right now, water temps are falling just slightly. Water levels are still constantly, constantly falling. Uh, we had just a little bit of rain last month, not much, but right now is the time as the fish's ceiling starts to drop on them and as your grass starts to die out. We don't have a lot of grass where I'm at here, but I know regionally across the country, most places have a little bit more grass. As that grass starts dying out, O2 levels are gonna be dropping. It's gonna condense the fish down. It's gonna condense the bait down as well. Thermoclines are well established, so fish have to be within a certain range we want to make sure we can hit that. Now, right now, one, it's one of the trickiest times of the year. I'm going to be completely honest. Fish can be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It is very strange. Feeding windows open up and you want to be throwing the baits that give you the highest percentage and the chance at the biggest fish in that area. So we're going to be determining uh, a lot of these lures based on catch percentage as well as um, higher percentage bigger fish, right? So we're gonna be throwing a couple lures here that are known to catch big fish. We're gonna be throwing a couple lures that are known to just catch fish overall. One of my top picks, guys, in the top water category is going to be a popper. Now this right here isn't just any popper. This is the snag proof, uh, this is the Z pop, or zoo pop, sorry. Uh, what's great about this, it's a soft plastic popper essentially, or not soft plastic. This is like a hollow body popper. What am I talking about? Uh, what's really cool about what's going on at Snag Proof in the Zoo series is they are taking the frog concept where it's weedless uh, and they've made them into poppers. They've made them into wake baits. They've made them into spook style baits. This one right here is the popping version of that. Check it out right there. This is just a shad pattern. A lot of what I'm doing in September in that early fall time is mimicking shad. If you find a lot of bait on your lake, uh, it can be one sign that you are in the right area. A lot of the times, if you're looking at bigger shad, you're in the best area. This one right here is going to be kind of an in-between. It's about two and a quarter inches, two and a half inches. So it's gonna imitate a pretty good size shad. It's gonna be an easy meal, uh, typically, if you've got grass. This is gonna be perfect around that. It's gonna sit perfectly level. Uh, it has a good popping action on it. You know, if you are throwing this right here, 30 to 40 pound braid is what I'm gonna be going with. Uh, very easy casting is another thing. It does have a nice weight in it. And what's awesome about this one is it actually makes a nice pop. Now it's not gonna be as crisp as something as like a Yellow Magic or maybe a Pop Max or something, but this one does get the job done and you can fish it around grassy areas. Speaking of grass, y'all, if you are fishing around grass, you want to make sure that you are fishing around the greenest, most healthy looking grass, because that's where those fish are gonna be congregating at. That's where the most oxygen in the water is. So you wanna be, if you are fishing around there and you've got reeds, you've got bulrushes, you've got actual hydrilla maybe, that is what you're gonna wanna be targeting. So whether it's topped out, whether it's just matted up, make sure you're throwing uh, something high percentage like this guy right here. This, this again is the Zoo Pop by Snag Proof. Very, very, very awesome bait. Now, so that kind of covers a lot of the grass that might still be milling around. Like I said, a lot of it will be dying off and you wanna make sure you can capitalize on that. Now, the reason I did also go with a popper instead of something like a frog or something like that is that with this bait here, you know, it can imitate a lot of different things on the surface of a mat. 
and you want to make sure that you're throwing it slower than normal. Really, if you find a clump of grass or you find like a reed clump, throw up next to that. Work it real slow. Give it a nice solid hit. Make sure it displaces some water. Let it sit for around five, 10 seconds. Give it another one. That's going to drive the fish absolutely bonkers and it's going to go hit your lure. So make sure you've got a nice heavy rod for that. The hooks on here are ultra sharp. They are a little bit thicker gauge, very, very similar to like a normal frog. So make sure you've got the equipment to handle that. Next up, this is going to be a bait that actually just came out. Um, I actually got on the water yesterday with a good customer of, our, of ours and tried these baits out. I wasn't sure of them at first, um, but looking at the design and fishing with it a little bit more, I actually absolutely love this bait here. Um, this is the Yamamoto Baits brand new Nuki Bug. So what's interesting about this bait here is that it is very, very cylindrical. If you are familiar with the Yamamoto Yama Tanuki, it is a very round, very heavy, soft plastic bait. This guy right here, honestly, not that heavy. You can't really throw this like you would a Yama Tanuki. Now, weightless, yes, it does have a kind of little spiral effect depending on how you rig it up. It still has two hook chambers in it, one on the top there and one on the bottom. It's actually symmetrical, so you can rig it up however you want. This bait here has a ton of action. Uh, I really do love the aspect of this bait where it has a very cylindrical body. Uh, EWG is gonna be my preferred method. You can absolutely throw a straight shank on this, but I would not recommend an offset worm hook. Now, one thing I learned with this bait is that though it does not look like it has a ton of action on the claws here, it is very, very thin. It's not displacing a lot of water with those claws it really, really moves in the water, kind of like I would compare it to like an Ultra Vibe Speed Craw, where they just move very, very fast, and you can feel that through your rod or through your line. It's got a higher frequency. So what that's gonna be doing, it's going to be drawing in a lot more bites, very subtle movements of the rod, get these claws flared up, and those fish will see it and attack it. So I caught this flipping it into tires, I caught this uh, flipping next to brush, I caught fish dragging it on the bottom with a heavier weight, Caught them all around the lake on this. We even threw it around some grass clumps. Got a few chasers, nothing big hanging around the grass right now, especially the ultra shallow grass. But I did have a lot of success on this brand new Nuki bug, and I think you will too. We've only got a couple colors in these, but I highly recommend you trying these out. These are very um, pretty durable main bodies. I will say it is a Yamamoto bait. It is pretty heavily salted compared to some of the other baits out there. The claws do rip a little bit easy, but I caught three fish on one and I was pretty happy. So can't all be like a yum dinger where you can just tear them to shreds, catch multiple, multiple, multiple fish. But this Nuki bug, I was very impressed and I think you will have a lot of success with it. Now, where exactly would I fish this? Like I said, isolated cover where I can just set this down, have it do what it needs to do, just like a speed craw, a little bit bigger presentation than a speed craw or something of that nature. Again, bigger, wider body, bigger presence in the water. I guarantee you some success on that one if you guys pick that one up. So they should be in the system when you're watching this video. Highly recommend that Nuki bug. So that's a craw profile. And you know, right now bass are feeding up on some crawfish. Uh, a lot of the crawfish are still burrowed up pretty good. Some of them will be coming out later in the fall here as the water starts to cool down more and more. And a lot of the times green pumpkin should be pretty standard. You know, green pumpkin is one of the highest colors that I throw in terms of all the baits that I have. Rarely throw black and blue most of the time. When it does start getting a little cooler in the winter, I will bring out more black and blue. Speaking of more soft plastics here, in a worm profile, this one right here has done a lot of damage for me lately. This is the Big Bite Baits Nico Rama, of course designed by one of my good buddies, Drew Gill. I'm not just including it in this video for Drew, but this is actually a really, really awesome bait. It is very similar to something like a hitworm, except this one actually moves around a little more. You get a little more action out of it. Uh, and the design of this is going to be very, very well thought out. So there is like, I guess people call it like an egg sack in the middle here where you can put some rings on it. You can put BMC crossover rings. 
it is a very durable plastic. It has a lot of salt in the bag. So the plastic itself, just like a lot of the other Big Bite baits, do not have a ton of salt in them, but they include some salt outside of them here. So whether you are Nico rigging this, Texas rigging this, I'm going to be throwing this around the most isolated cover I can find. So on my home lake, Lake Louisville, there are some dock areas, there are some um, brush pile areas, there are some um, pole areas that where docks used to be. I am throwing this worm right here and uh, I'm honestly just giving away my bite if you fish Lake Louisville. Um, Nico rigging this, very, very simply guys, if you don't know Nico rigs, you're gonna take a nail weight of your choice. The Dobbins nail weights are back in stock finally. I know they're very hard to find. They've got the little uh, extra bulbous end on them. These are uh, definitely a high commodity. This is a 1 16th, I believe. Yeah, 1 16th right there. Really, really neat design on those. I'm not sure if they patented this or no one else really does it, but one of my favorite nail weights gives you great bottom contact with that bulb sticking out. But Nika rig, again, guys, not that complicated. Ch hook of your choice, nail weight in the bottom, and it's gonna drag along. You can make it look like a wacky rig. You can make it look like uh, literally anything. You can put your hook farther down and kind of just drag it like this, where the tail's very, very floppy. A lot of the time, I like to rig it up at the top like this and give that worm a very tall profile on the bottom. So, Nico Rama, isolated cover. You can throw this up into brush piles. You can throw this into foundations. You can throw this into docks. Uh, brush, literally everything. The Nico rig is very, very versatile. That's what makes Drew such a versatile angler, being able to throw this just about anywhere. And of course, very easy to change your weight. You just take it out, put a new one in. So definitely check out the Nico Rama. Trick worms work great. Zoom trick worms are one of my all time favorites. Um, I will say these Nico Ramas do not break very easily either. You can go through tons of fish. And if you super glue that weight in, you aren't gonna be prone to losing a lot of them. So Nico rig is going to be a little bit longer as well compared to most normal worms, but it's a straight tail. So the profile is very, very small. Hookup ratio is very good because it is a softer plastic. Moving on to some moving baits here. I forget where we're at now. I guess let's do this one first. This is one of the techniques that I am not the most proficient in. It's okay. Um, I definitely will throw it when the time is right, especially when I can locate the bigger bait. And that's what you're really trying to do here in the fall transition. The bait is going to be, um, or was in the heat of the summer here, usually just massive bait balls. Right now in September as water start, starts to cool, your bait is going to group together in like-sized pods. So a lot of the bigger bait, you know, your big five to six to seven to eight inch gizzard shad are gonna start grouping up. And a lot of your smaller shad are gonna start grouping up as well. And you're gonna have individual schools of fish targeting individual schools of bait, depending on what they want. Spoons, flutter spoons, these guys right here. Um, Jackal counterback spoon, we've only got a few left, so make sure you pick those up. Brand new iCast release as well as Dixie Jet Spoons. These ones right here, I believe this is the Falcon Spoon. Yep, Jet Falcon Spoon. These are great profile spoons. These are gonna be kind of that seven to eight-ish range, kind of six to eight-ish range that really allows you to key in on a great subset of bait, a great size of bait. So these ones right here, typically I like to throw them offshore. A lot of the time right now, especially if you've got water temps starting to cool down around the lower 70s, those fish are gonna be hanging around docks, green lights, and stuff like that. So if you haven't tried a spoon, do not be afraid. Make sure you're gonna, make sure you have heavy enough line for these. You know, they're displacing a lot of water. Uh, even if you don't have a fish on these, it's gonna feel like you're pulling in just a ton of bricks. What's cool about the Jackal spoon, if you don't know already, this spoon actually shoots back away from you, kind of like this. And uh, it really, it, it's really just a really crazy different action that allows you to cover water a lot more effectively and uh, not quickly per se, but allows you to break down water a lot faster. You don't need forward facing sonar for these. these. This one especially does not get hung up a lot. This one here actually has three hooks on it. It's got a bottom and two side ones to ensure just perfect hookup ratio all the time. So if they swipe at it, they're probably getting a hook in it, of course, comes in a bunch of different colors, but silver is going to be typically what I'm throwing 
like 90% of the time. I can't think of really any other time where I'm not throwing like a silver other than maybe shattered glass or maybe like one out of 500 times gold, right? So spoons, great option for imitating bigger bait fish. And an honorable mention on here, as much as I love throwing a big bait, um, this guy right here just came in the shop and I want to let you know because you can't just buy these all the time. This is the Bull Shad Shad Glide. It is in the consignment case. And um, this one was pre-owned, got a couple little nicks in it there, but we reduced the price down. So if you are interested in throwing bigger swim baits, this is my all time favorite swim bait to throw, glide bait uh, specifically. And uh, eight inch shad glide, wide glider. We got it up on there on the website for $150. Comes with great uh, stock split ring, stock hooks, everything on it, super amazing. People at Bull Shad know what to do. And this is just a really, really dope looking color. Um, large mouth bass are cannibals. They will not hesitate to eat their own kind. Um, and this is just one, one of the sickest, most dope looking large mouth patterns I've ever seen. Little bit of color shift in there, copper green. And uh, pick this one up on the website, guys. You can check it out there. Also, Labor Day sale coming up 20% off basically the entire store. Some exclusions apply, you'll see them at checkout, so don't worry about that. But Labor Day sale, I want to get this in here before we moved on to some moving baits. All right, moving baits. So cranking is probably my number one go-to technique in the fall time, the fall transition, when those fish are gonna be cruising around certain areas, they're not gonna be moving a ton, but they're starting to move back into creeks, and that is really to push bait into there. I don't think migratorily they have to move back into creeks. I think a lot of the fish can stay main lake all the time if they want, if there's enough bait around and there's enough structure to hold that bait there and not have them flee everywhere and run everywhere. So a lot of the time in that fall transition in September, your Octobers, fish are gonna be moving around pockets. They're gonna be moving around deep pockets where they can push bait up into and really just hammer down on them. Kind of like white bass. If you've seen white bass on your lake or on your pond or something like that, and you just see stuff getting blown up all the time. Typically, white bass, right? A lot of the time they can be largemouth as well. I've seen several instances where just hundreds of one to two pound largemouth group up and just start pushing bait, uh, especially the smaller bait, into little pockets and stuff like that. And I have just gone out there, absolutely smashed them, thrown a spook, like anything in the water that was white, absolutely crushed them, just catch them all that all night long essentially. Usually happens early morning or late in the evening when it starts to cool off. One of the more unique crankbaits to come in the shop here, this is the Nishini Chippewa, Baby Chippewa Deep Diver. What's unique about these, I've done a video on these kind of explaining what's going on with the blade and everything. When you are fishing this fall time, you need something that stands out just a little bit more than everything else, especially when fishing around shad. Schooling shad, You've got the amazing paint job on the, on the uh, Chippewas here already. When you also add the blade here, you can also exchange the blades for different colors. Um, this puts out a very, very unique sound. Not per se knocking noise, but it's going to have the squeak of the blade. It's gonna have the squeak of the hooks. And it is very, very unique. It puts off a very different sensation in the water, especially as it's running. Runs very true. Slow speed, medium speed, fast speed. You can jerk it along. Does a lot of different things. It is a very slow float lure here. Um, and you can also weigh it down if you need to. Come stock with Ichigawa hooks, which are by far one of my favorite hooks for crankbaits here. It's gonna be that uh, O'Shaughnessy Ben style hook. It's not an EWG where they're pointed in, but it's gonna have that O'Shaughnessy bend, that deep bend. So definitely check these out. Um, these are a little bit harder to throw, so I wanna make sure that you pick up the right um, rod and reel for these. Make sure you have a rod that can load up enough to really start moving this bait. Get, out, get all that potential energy in there and sling it out. Highly recommend a Daiwa reel that has SV boost in it. Uh, 100 size reel perhaps, maybe the brand new Tatula 100 SVTW with SV Boost or something like a uh, Corrado MGL, uh, one of those Magnum Light reel or Magnum Light spools, 150 or 70. Those are gonna be my two very budget friendly bait casters for this bait here. You can also throw it optionally on spinning, you know, 
We're not going to judge you for that. You can throw it on a spinning rod, especially this baby one here. And uh, this one, this one right here. No, Sam, don't tell them about it. Don't worry, I got you guys. This guy right here. This is a finesse crankbait. And this is made by Megabass. This is the Megabass IXI Type 3. This bait here gets down to around 2.3 meters, reality around eight to nine foot, uh, depending on your line size. This one here, very, very specific. Uh, you want to make sure if you're throwing this on casting, you wanna make sure you've got this on very light line. Eight to 10 pound maximum fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon. If you're throwing braid to leader, that's your thing, not my thing. But spinning rods, absolutely love it on a spinning rod. 10 pound to around 10 pound, this might go too. Very easy casting. Make sure you've got a rod that can take a little oomph when they do smack this out of your hand. Uh, very finesse crankbait here. Let me take it out of the package. We've got a couple different colors left. I'm buying them up personally um, pretty often, but that's not because I'm losing them. I'm stocking up, guys. Um, what's great about this bait here is it's literally just a little shad profile, as you can see here. This bait sits very, very high um, back high, just like this in the water as you're reeling it down. Gets down extremely fast too. So if you're fishing 45 degree banks, if you're fishing even steeper than that, this bait is gonna follow that contour straight down, which is really, really awesome. You want to maintain bottom contact. And uh, this bait here, it's actually silent, but it puts off an amazing rattle. Paint jobs are awesome. And it has a really, really wide tail kicking action, depending on how fast you're reeling it in. If you're reeling very fast, it's gonna be pretty tight, but if you're slow winding it, if you're just going down, ticking rocks, it is going to go boop, 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 left and right. So uh, the hooks on here, you can definitely upgrade them. This bait itself is a slow float. So if you do wanna fish this kind of like a shad wrap, perhaps, you get it down there and have it float up a little bit, that is a great option. Um, typically, I just crank these in. Again, these are also gonna have a LBO casting system in it. So it's got that tungsten casting system that allows you to absolutely sling this. I have a couple of them actually that I've had for around four or five years uh, where the LBO system in it has just been casted so many times. It's starting to stick a little bit, but trust me, it takes a lot to get there. I really throw these all times of the year, even in the just heat of the summer when it gets extremely tough, it gets bit. Winter time, especially when you can't throw a 1.5 or can't throw like a 3XD or something like that, you're gonna get bit on this guy here. So those are my top baits for September. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. We've got a bunch of cool stuff going on here. Of course, if you were just here for the live scope stuff, I'm gonna be doing more on that as I get more footage. Hopefully I do. All right, y'all, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video here. If you did, please leave a like on it. And if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing to Lake Pro Tackle here, following us on Instagram and Facebook because we are posting up the most badass stuff coming out in the industry. And when we get stuff in, if you're looking for something in particular, let me know down in the comments or shoot me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. I am happy to help you out. Whatever you need, swim baits, BFS, conventional gear, we've got it for you. So thank you so much again, y'all. I will see you next time, Lake Pro Tackle. See ya.